It's night after night. And as I reported on world events, I started realizing there was a pattern developing. Because no matter where the terrorist activity took place, and remember, this was in the 80s, where we started seeing a rise of terrorism and terrorist attacks around the world. No matter where the terrorist activity took place, the name of the perpetrators were always the same. Muslims, Ahmed, Muhammad, Hussein, Ali. The name of the victims were always Westerners, Christians and Jews. Terry Waite, Terry Anderson, Colonel Higgins, the Achille Lauro, the TWA, the Panam flights, and I can go on and on. As a matter of fact, in my first book, Because They Hate, titled Because They Hate, I go over pages upon pages, I list pages of all the years and all the attacks against the United States and Western interest that no one paid attention to. And I started realizing that what I used to think was a regional problem between a majority Muslim Middle East trying to kill or expel the minority Christians and Jews had become a worldwide problem. But the world was not paying attention. The world was not connecting the dots. The world lacked imagination. And isn't this exactly what the 9-11 Commission report said after 9-11? We lacked imagination. It's not that we did not know that Osama bin Laden wants to attack us. Osama bin Laden attacked the, in the previous eight years, Osama bin Laden attacked the World Trade Center. Uh, in 1993, the only difference between the two attacks between 1993 and 2001 were the buildings did not come down. They attacked our uh, embassies in uh, the Kubar Towers in Saudi Arabia. They attacked our embassies in Africa and Tanzania. They blew up the USS coal. And then they were so confident that we were so asleep that they came back and attacked the World Trade Center, the exact same spot again, and this time brought the buildings down. We lacked imagination. It's not that we did not know what our enemy wanted to do to us. Our, we are dealing with an enemy for the first time in history that is so open, so clear, so determined. They don't beat around the bush. They're very direct. And the more direct they are, the deeper we dig our head into the sand thinking, na 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 boo boo, I'm not going to listen. <laughs> And the sad reality is that as long as Jewish blood was being shed on the streets of Jerusalem and Christian blood was being shed on the streets of Beirut, nobody in the world gave a darn. It wasn't until September 11th in the United States that the world woke up and realized, why do they hate us? What did we do to the Islamic world? Very simple words I have for you. They hate us. They hate us because we are infidels, plain and simple. So what is driving this radicalism? Where is all this hatred coming from? A lot of people, especially when you listen to Al-Qaeda or the Palestinian, they say, well, we hate America. We are after America because America stands with Israel because of your foreign policy. That's why we attacked you on September 11th. If that is the case, then what is the mothership that is launching all this hatred against the West? In order for you to understand that, you have to learn a little bit about an organization called the Muslim Brotherhood, which you have heard something about associated with the Egyptian revolution in the last a few months, especially after Christmas. The Muslim Brotherhood is the oldest Islamic terrorist organization in the world, founded in 1928 in Egypt, with 70 offshoot Islamic organizations, including Al-Qaeda and Hamas. Now... The Muslim Brotherhood was founded in 1928. 1928? Israel didn't even exist. America's foreign policy supporting Israel? Israel didn't even exist for us to have a foreign policy. So why did the Muslim Brotherhood launch Al-Qaeda, Hamas, and 70 other Islamic terrorist organizations around the world today? The answer is because they launched a movement of radical Islam to revive the authentic radical Islam of the 7th century and bring back the Islamic empire, the Islamic caliphate, which Ataturk eliminated and ended five years prior in 1924. The Islamic empire existed from the 600s until less than 100 years ago. Our knowledge of history is so slim and so small and so almost nil we do not understand what we're dealing with. We do not understand why our enemy is fighting us.
They not only want the elimination of Israel, they want the elimination of our Judeo-Christian value system and of the West in general in order to bring back the Islamic Caliphate and conquer the world.